very important to always check to make sure you're using the latest install of WordPress. In this case, it was 3.0, so it looked good. And again, I just did this last night, so 3.0. We're at what 3.0.1 right now. Um, for those of you who've been running WordPress since 2006, it's crazy how often this is done. So, if you have any like 2.3s out there or 1.8 out there, you might want to update them because they're full of pharmacy links. So, uh, current installs. Now, you want to make sure you're not installing over your existing site, and that would be a headache especially if it was backed up. So we're gonna look for that button here. Uh, I did this very simple short domain here, 34a.us. Um, we put in our admin, you can put in your password, you set up your email address, things like that, and that's what we're gonna call our site, so that is not my wrong site. Um, remember, I am an Yes. So this is in Fantastico. This is a do-it-yourself install. This is if you haven't done the one click, which is great because if, if we bring this up, if we go, where, where is this? Then you really should be doing the one click install. So if you're not familiar with Fantastico, it's, it's just a lot easier. I'm just showing the, the options, and but I'm glad you brought it up. Fantastico is great. I think Fantastico might be like $8 a year, or it might be a single. It's usually included in the share. It's usually included in the share. With good yeah, hosts, it would be in there. <laughs> so we're going to install it. So that was, you know, we, we did. I'll go back. Do you recommend leaving the um, username as admin? Uh, we're going to get into that. I do not recommend it. No. Yeah. So um, I do for, my, for the background admin. I recommend it. But we'll go into that in a bit. I've got some screenshots on that. So again, you just fill out your basics, so you've got, you know, we, this is like our first step. You pick your information here, hopefully you've written down your password or saved it somewhere you can remember it, and you do your install. We look here, you're gonna choose your, your main directory, this is your URL, finish your install, and make sure, remember your username and password, I don't know how many times you guys, you know, do an install and go, what I use? And then you have to go back and figure out so what's nice about Fantastico now is you can click directly on here, you're gonna go right into your into your WordPress admin panel. So we're gonna go into WordPress from here. <coughs> basic stuff, very basic. Log in, we can get started. We've all seen that screen. Unless you haven't done an install. Very cool. So I did the install last <laughs> night. <laughs> this is just my luck. So I did the install. And I noticed that it was 3.0, not 3.0.1. So I thought, well, big, you know, no big deal. I'll just update it. Sure, it goes through the update, churning, drinking my Captain Wiser. And I'm packing up, installation failed. Oh, what do I do now? Go back to option one. <laughs> you can call the geek, you can tweet them, you know, you call, hey, oh God, I got an error, what should I do? Because the reality is, it could be anything. I mean, this could be installation failed. Could not copy file public. Who, what do you guys think this was? Who knows what the cause of that was? The right permissions on the right permissions, exactly. So, so there, and this was an automated install from my host, and the, the permissions were not set properly to do an upgrade. But a normal user that's never done a WordPress install would be pulling their hair out, going, "Well, what do I do now?" Now you're going to be emailing back and forth with your host when it's really like FTP in, right click, change your permissions, and you'd be done. So that's where option one, option two comes in. Honestly, all this stuff is covered on WordPress.org. I mean, in great, great detail. You know, uh, the, did that fully mean that that file failed? That, yeah, the, the entire install failed. Or the, the and, and even better, and I didn't screenshot this, not only did the install fail, but if you tried to go to the blog, you got the, our site is down for maintenance, we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Which is then, you know, and you're down, and you go, I've lost everything, I don't have anything. Unfortunately, it was the first time install. Um, okay, so, you know, you go, you go back to option one. If, if that's gonna be a problem for you, and here's the thing, it's a reality. I mean, again, that wasn't, this isn't like me setting up a uh, Linux server in my garage and, you know, doing an install on my own. 
this is like using a hosted install. You can still get errors like that. So those are the little things you want to look uh, on the WordPress site for. Again, they cover it in great detail. Pretty much everything you can think about. Um, so, oh, here's one of the geeks right here. So everybody, you know, you should just give out your cell phone number. <laughs> and then feel like, you know, call between the hours of 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. if you're having a problem with doing your Because also, he'll, he'll talk to your house and help you. Help you. <laughs> So here's the here's the, actually the hard way, and and the hard way I mean that facetiously because it's actually pretty easy. It's a lot more text, but you know it, this is how we used to have to do it. You had to go to WordPress and, and download the file. So you know, that's that's the old way. Uh, you have to create a create a database. Hopefully, if you if you're creating a database, you know how to use PHP MyAdmin, um, and we don't really need to get into that because if you don't know how to use it, you want to do the one clicker, one click install. Or funny people. Uh, you want to go through and rename your, your sample to config. So you're going to put in your username, password, information like that. You just you place your WordPress files in your web server. Have I lost anybody up with this? Can people follow yeah. this? Yeah, that's good. That's what I want to know. Because if we when we start talking about like FTP, my mom's on Facebook, but she would not know how to set up a WordPress system. So, you know, she calls me and says, you have to go on Facebook, see my pictures of Hawaii. But she doesn't know how to do something like this. So if I say, oh, mom, you just have to FTP in and change the permissions to 7755, seven, that would not work. I'd be like, well, fly to Florida and come do it for me. Yes? Do you, do you normally get away with the auto updates? Or just I, do? I think in most cases, do, do auto updates. Do, do the one-click install or do the hosted install, something like that. Fantastico, because typically they're going to update, and they'll, they're better at reminding you that, that you're out of date. Plus the um, the WordPress, you know, automate uh, update automatically is a far better way to go. Once obviously, once you have some content, you should be doing backups of your content. There's plenty of plugins for that backups. If you have a good host, you usually have 24 hours some kind of backup on that anyway. But I would save that for a you know, worst case scenario. Um, there are scripts that you can do a backup that, that will email to you. We it basically email your database. Uh, I do that, it can get annoying because you get you know get the email in 24 hours, but at least you have your content. So, yes? With the one admin password and password control, how is that? Right, so it's the same thing. This is just the directions, basically. I just shortened what they give you on WordPress.org. So if you, if you ran on Google and you typed in uh, WordPress install, you will find very detailed, organized, step-by-step -step instructions for doing it. The only thing is you do have to download the file to your computer, so you have to know how to unzip a file. This is basic stuff, you know, and you have to know to update, send your files via file transfer protocol or FTP to your server. So if you don't know what that is, you're better off with the one click. Just because not everybody uses FTP access. I don't know. Probably plenty of people that don't have FTP in the room. You the know, we one just click install will the one click install will take care of that. In fact, the Fantastico install will take care of that as well. And once you're in WordPress, fortunately now WordPress, you really don't need FTP for much of anything except for two SEO things I'm going to go over. Do you have a question? Uh, just a comment. With reference to, uh, I guess, privileges, you need to know your um, 755. Five, Uh, I mean. uh, yeah, I, don't, I just don't know. I know my head, check, 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 check. Kind of like check these off. Um, so this is, I know, you know, Unix people and security people wouldn't advise it, but I always say if you've got a problem, I just set permissions to that, do an install, and then set permissions back to what they were. So if you had, you know, lockdown permissions, so turn them always, off, I'm do your sure. install, and then put them back. So it's always the things you're using the Unix uh, Oh yeah. Um, how many? Anybody? Anybody have their WordPress installed on a Windows server? Okay. Attempting. So I've done it. I've had uh, Windows servers. Uh, I just personally don't like it. You know, Linux seems to be it just runs better on Linux. I have a much better experience. So yeah, that's you know that's the Unix term. So 
So we have, uh, don't forget option number one, option number two. You know, we, it's jokingly, but it's great to have friends that are geeks that can help us with this stuff. Not only with the first time install, but then all the other stuff that comes after that. You know, because even if we have hosts and we pay for hosting and stuff like that, we don't always have that. Yes? I've got some questions about your comments about the made for asset sites that you want to a network approach, for example. Is there, is there a key in setting up the hosting, the VPS versus shared, to not have a whole group of, of names you filled out, uh, picked out by Google because, you know, they're all Yes, there is a key. And the, key the key is to have lots of different hosts and have servers in different states throughout the country. And maybe throughout the world. So, so, so generally, how many sites could you have on a VPS? Thousands upon thousands. I mean, how many, how many could you have on, on, on a VPS? Say? Oh, you can run, you can run, run a thousand on a single VPS, but if, they, if the IP gets dinged, you'll lose all of them. Is, is there a way to randomize the IPs, or is there a way to break them up into subsets? Uh, that you got to talk to your host, so you can get if, if you're if you you know giving good money to your host and they're and they're kind of up on what you're doing, and you say can I get different groups of IPs and you can usually work that out. But you're usually gonna think you're gonna end up in the same C blocks basic, um, but that's something to talk to your host about. But you know if you think thirty nine dollars a month for a VPS and you want to invest four hundred bucks a month in servers, you can have ten of them. So, like, we have servers in Los Angeles, Virginia, New York, Dallas, and you just have different groups of sites. So, if you lose a, a group, you don't shut down your entire network. And you, you know, registered, you can have a server registered to one one person, and then a server registered to another person. That's over the heads of most people here, but we won't get into that. So, before your install, one great reason to have FTP access. Who doesn't have FTP access on their computer? It's probably there. If you're in Windows, it's in your uh, file manager. Uh, Mac, I don't use Mac too much, but I'm sure it's built in. Terminal. It's terminal. So um, two things, robots.txt. And who doesn't know what this is here? OK, so we're going to get into that. That's, that, that's going to be important for your SEO. Uh, this is important, kind of important for your SEO. But it's even, it's even more important. Has anybody ever? gone back to your website, your, your WordPress blog, you know, maybe you haven't posted for the last 30 days, or maybe you are posting regularly, and you notice that all your ads are for pharmacy links and Viagra and <laughs> things like that, maybe porn things, and you go, why are all my ads for Big Pharma? Well, that's probably because your site got hacked and you not, are not aware of it. So that happens more common than people realize. So robots.txt is a great way to to take care of at least the basic stuff. You know, people that are just skimming the upper level. Um, URL, you want a great domain. You know, nobody's really gotten into that, but domains are gonna be important. And you want a text editor for editing these two files, which you're gonna pretty much have on every computer. Make sure your host supports WordPress if you go on it yourself, right? You gotta have a basic, I don't think there's any host out there that doesn't support WordPress that would not be in business too long. Download your latest release. We're at 3.0.1 right now. I hope that tonight they don't release the next one. Press is typical of doing that. Um, so you un unload it. Be prepared with your password. Oops. And our, our robot. So um, some of you know what this file is. Who's got this installed on their WordPress blog using robots? Good. Um, main reason why is this. Here's very basic. So we want to disallow WP login, WP register, WP admin. You guys, you know, you, add, you, you log in here to your admin so that you can administrate your site. Do you know that Google's indexing this? So just for fun, when you go home, not on a public network, but when you go home and you're in private, type in your password to your site and just see if it shows up somewhere in index, in, in index Google results. Or type in uh, your site and see if, if that comes in in the top, in the first page. So if it is, you might want to block that. Because you don't really need that in search engines. Saying, oh, this is the path to my WP admin. Because a hacker already would know that it's there. But they're not manually going to type in WP admin. They're running a script maybe in Google that says, give me all the WordPress sites that haven't updated since 2.5 and then have admin as the, u as the user, and one, two, three, four, five, six as the password, and right. log me in. And you'd be surprised how many you know, automated scripts you can just start logging into sites. 
and then change the site. So it's that easy. Uh, HD access might not look familiar to you. So this is something we're going to get into for using permalinks. Yes? Are you going to have this up on the Sure. I'll put it up. I'll, uh, I'll probably put it on the WordCamp site. Or I'll just give it to Austin. Take it, put it up there. Uh, and honestly, too, a lot of this is available online, so you can just use this as a, as a base guide. You don't need to write this down, because this is going to be in your, in your WordPress. But it's a step, a step summary. Yep, so now we are logged in, okay? So whether you've done one, one click install, um, whether you've done a fantastic install, or you've done it yourself. We're gonna get into a little bit of what I do, um, things I recommend, you might disagree, you might agree. First thing I like to do is delete the Hello, Hello World post. Reason why, if you got a site, and let's say you, it's Friday night, you did your install, and you're not planning on doing anything for the next 30 days, you don't want just the Hello World post sitting there because you're automatically telling Google this is a WordPress install and we haven't done anything with it. Which isn't going to help you rank at all. And in my experience, if you let that sit for 30 days and you don't do anything with it, you basically uh, increase your time on what's called the gray bar. So I mean, you're not getting any anything from it. Because why would they index it? You know, it's, it's your URL. Uh, it's there are so many versions of a WordPress install with a whole load of world post that it doesn't offer anything unique. So anything you can do that's unique would be a bonus. So get rid of that right away. Plugins. Uh, everybody's got their favorite plugins. Um, basics are out of the box. WordPress is great on SEO. And anybody, by the way, anybody not know what SEO is? The term? So search engine optimization. So SEO, if you want your site to rank well in Google, in Bing, uh, on Yahoo, uh, Optimism, Excite, <laughs> GoTo, like GoTo is fine, dating myself. Okay, so add, uh, I like all in SEO pack. It's easy, I like to install that. Robot Meta is a um, plugin that will take care of all the robots.txt stuff that won't require you to do your FTP stuff. So, Getting a little advanced here, but it, it's great stuff. It helps, one, give your site uh, more accessibility for search engines, and on the flip side, give your site less accessibility. So one will give you greater, so that people can see your site, and then one will lock down so you can help keep scammers, spammers, and hackers from getting into your site. Somebody really wants to hack your site, they're gonna get it in WordPress. So if they really want to get in, they're gonna get it here. So we're going to activate our plugins. Basic SEO, we went, already went over that. There's hundreds of them though, so you don't have to use this one. You can use some uh, Headspace, there's, there's so many things you can use. I, I like to activate all plugins. So we want to activate Kismet. That's like fast. Because you guys see how many, like, you, you set your blog up and 24 hours later you're getting comments. <laughs> you're getting comments and they're spammers. It's like, okay, You know, like, no. So someone, oh, love your site. Oh. So you know, we want to turn that on, turn on your other stuff. Uh, you should always turn on the Hello Dolly site. I hope somebody's recording this. Is always turn on this plugin. Wow. You know why? <laughs> because Matt. Don't turn that plugin off. Matt Holloway, that was the very first plugin created for WordPress. A little little uh, history there. Very first <laughs> plugin created. It doesn't do anything other than play the it. it puts the words to Hello Dolly in text in your admin panel. So you get to read it when you log in. It was, his, it was the first plugin to no, test. Because you your site will rank better. Just out of courtesy for the creator of WordPress, the first thing you don't want to do is go, oh, this so plugin doesn't do anything deleted. It's, not, it's the guy that made it. It'll be like, you know, buying the first Chevy ever made, coming home and taking the animal off. Basically. You know? It's always in Vegas, right? Yeah, I said the opposite in Vegas, and, and I was told the website would stop ranking, so I've now changed it to Because I figured that developers of WordPress have a way to somehow log into my site and turn all those sites off. They haven't done it. So we're, we're now getting into, uh, we're in the dashboard, in your profile here. We're gonna, we're gonna answer your question about the admin. 
So we're going to update your admin profile. Um, I like to be specific. So no, we don't want to just use admin. Again, that's great because for hackers. So if you log in admin for yourself, that's OK. But you don't necessarily want to use admin tags for everything. And then here's why. So I'm using some old screenshots here that still fly. This is an ex example here of a comment. Admin says, we've seen this all the time, right? Admin says. Admin who? Who's the admin? Who's the site admin? If it's your personal site, then we figure that's you're the admin. But if you're if you're a brand or you know if there's more than one offer on your site or something like that, well we don't know who that admin is. So I'm gonna get a little bit more than that. Here's a great example of somebody's site here. This is the guy that's name, and he uses his name. Technically he's the admin, but he uses his name. So Avanas there is saying, you know, I'm I am who I am. What's the benefit of that for SEO? His name, every time you click on that, you're gonna to get to that site. So those comments are getting indexed rather than admin. A admin's, you know, very hard if you want to try to rank for admin. <laughs> so same thing here. This guy you know Sunny Gill. You want to rank for Sunny Gill? Put it in your comment. Then every time you leave a comment, you've got a link back to your site. And then if people come along and scrape your content, you get the links back to your site with your name in it. So at least you're getting that. So good to do this one, good to do this one. They're, they're great examples. Very, very simple stuff. Here's one of the WordPress developers. Another example here, Joseph Scott. So I always find the example of, find out what developers, the people that made the stuff do. That goes for Google too. Find out what the Google engineers do. Go to the Google engineer blogs, see what they do, and figure, you know, if you're the head of the web spam team for Google, and you've got a WordPress blog, chances are WordPress is, is the way to go. Uh, if they're using certain plugins, maybe you should use those same plugins. They've probably tested it. You know, they probably make sure that they're working. They might not tell you that, but it's, a, it's just a good way to go. Um, this person here, again, uses her name, and she just explains, Liz Strauss. And so this, this top search engines, Liz Strauss is associated with successful item blog.com. That's 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 yes, we're gonna get into that picture there. I think, did I skip a step? Okay, I did skip this step. So that is in the admin, you're gonna change your name. So where it says name, you can still be admin for your own personal login. And you change your name to Liz, last name Strauss, nickname would become Liz Strauss, in this case. Um, we're gonna get into something else here. You mean, yes. you mean it's the nickname and the user profile? Your user profile. Absolutely. You are, you, let me see if we go back here. Okay, show some examples. So your profile here, I just didn't show the screen shot out here. So you go to your profile, you update your admin profile. Yes? When you go to somebody's site, is there an easy way to find out what plugins they are using? Um, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, you, you may be able to, to uh, look at the code and figure that out. I would think you can find some of them in the code. That would be one thing. But I would imagine most people would answer that if you asked them. Okay. Um, Yes. If um, what name would you suggest using if you have your name and you have a nickname that people may know you by and maybe search it? That's a great question. So if you have a name and you have a nickname, what what do you want? What's the name of your domain? So if your if your domain is uh, you know greathamburgers.com and your name is Bob Smith. You probably don't want Bob Smith going to greathamburgers.com, even though you're the admin. You're, I would suggest being the admin should be Great Hamburgers. So you put Great as your first name, Hamburgers as your last name, and admin. Uh, it might seem people go, oh, that seems a little spammy. But the, every time you leave a comment, the comment would be posted by Great Hamburgers. So if you go ahead and hire a writer later, or hire somebody to admin your site, you can continue to do that flawlessly without having to change the ad. Um, and that way, that way it links back. Plus, your comments are getting indexed, your site's getting indexed, your, your site's gonna get scraped, everybody's site's getting scraped, and your site's gonna get scraped with great hamburgers versus the box. Is there any plugins you could recommend to help keep your site from being hacked? Um, none that I'm aware of. There are some that are you know, really heavy duty out there. So I would check them. Best advice that I've found is 
keep yourself updated to the latest version. Uh, I follow a pattern, I do this for most electronics, is I don't do it the day that it comes out. So if you know the newest version of WordPress comes out, I don't do it in the first 24 hours because I want to wait to read the next day that it was hacked. You know, it's like, hey, we got a new release, and then you find out 24 hours later there's a bug in it, and everybody that updated got hacked. So usually I'll wait a few days. So if you had a thousand sites like the example you made earlier, are you able to bulk update those sites? Bulk update able? those sites. You can use a, a WordPress MU, so a multi multi user install. Um, you can do that, uh, or you can run um, a script in cPanel that will update all of those sites. Uh, we've um, you can you can hire local programmers. There's some people in this room that are spectacular people. There's a gentleman here, uh, Cesar Serna, sitting here. Is just amazing work with WordPress. Uh, I'd recommend him. So if you need to do something like you've got a thousand sites and you want to run maybe a single database for all the sites, you know if you're running a, a made for assets, you don't need a very big database. So something like that. You know an expert can figure that stuff out for you. Sorry, I gotta just say about the MFA sites, Mick Rats, um, used to work for Google Ads sites, uh -huh. very closely with the policy team, told to do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We'll it's, you know, shut down. With that, this is 2006, 2007 stuff, so. Yeah, this is, I mean, they just made huge, um, huge, huge, huge strides, strides, and uh, I mean, we're shutting down people just left and right all the time. And people are like, what, why? Yeah, why am I going? Um, and it's just, I just, just, yeah, things have changed. Well, where, where do you draw a line between made for AdSense and an actual live site that you're updating with content? I mean, so, well, you're talking about a thousand different websites, cool. MFA, like that's clearly MFA. Cool. I mean, you're right, there is a fine line, and, um, you know, but, but there are also sites that are clearly on the other side of the line. Right. And that just kind of sounds like you're talking about. It's, but, it's open to discussion, it's a very heated discussion, but if you hire somebody to write articles, it's seven dollars an article. You've got the thing where if you've got a thousand sites, you're going to get nailed. If you know if they're going to go, oh, these are all, it's obvious. Um, if you're at least active somewhat and you do something, you know, you can, some, you'd be surprised. Sometimes you're better than what people are doing on their own blogs. Um, so it's just like a matter of you know being doing your own thing manually versus automating. But that's really a discussion for outside and off the platform. But I, I would agree with that. I think it's just not a good strategy anymore. People have made some fortune about that. Can I just give a site for the uh, security that somebody was asking about? Sure. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Brad Williams <coughs> is really good. And if you just go to slideshare.net slash William SBA, um, Williams SBA, uh, Brad Williams, he's got a great slideshow on us. Say the site again, please. Um, it's slideshare.net slash William S B A. And then you'll find several uh, presentations he's done on security. The, the, the latest is now that's what I call a WordPress security for the So something I should have said when I first came in is important as a speaker you should always ask does anybody in the room work for Google or has worked for Google in the past? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Bob Smith, <laughs> and I work for a great hamburger shop. Actually, I don't even know if somebody's calling out that site. Um, so we're going get to in, get into this. I'm pulling some slides from a, a talk I did in Vegas, so it's a little bit more vegas -y. But uh, we're going to get to SEO, so something that everybody loves about WordPress. It's permalinks. <laughs> Does everybody know, not know what permalinks are? <laughs> permalinks, so when you set up your blog, let's see if we got one here. So we're looking up here at your URL structure. Successful, blog.com, forward slash blog, forward slash social media for beginners, all you need to know. I mean, that's like, that's like a lot of information. Uh, by default, that would be successfulblog.com, forward slash question mark, wp1.php. Something like that, um, and that's that's. Some people argue that, that this is actually a stinky way to go because it's really hard to remember that, or you know, you, if you have to type it out. But that's why we use search engines. We've got lazy, you know, we just type stuff in. Um, but that's an example of a permalink. 
So there's basically a person that's saying category one, and I want the title of my post to be social media for beginners, all you need to know. So we're going forward here, permalink settings. So you're gonna choose what works best for you. Are you a, are you a news site? Is your site uh, you know, a news blog? Is it your personal blog? Are you showing photographs? Is it a photo blog? Things like that. So day and name is okay. So you, can, you have your basic WordPress has nothing. So it's just vanilla, it's gonna be WP with question mark PHP. That's perfectly fine, you can do that. You know, no reason you have to change it unless you're looking for uh, working on your SEO. Day and name is okay, meaning like today, if I post a site today, uh, it's gonna be the date, and there's gonna be a name with the post, month and name, so you can have your site look like September, October. Custom structure, in my opinion, is better. Uh, if you are gonna do any of these, you're gonna have to have access to your HD access file. Uh, so that, again, comes back to where you get to the beginning. Either have a geek candy, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you have FTP access, it's a simple, simple thing to do. You create a text file, HD access, I think I'm gonna have some screenshots of that. You upload it, you're gonna be done, and you're pretty much done for you know, as long as you have your blog. I'm almost done, I'm gonna move quickly here. So, I won't get into all the details here. This is one, this is the ones supplied by WordPress. You've got your year, your month name, your post name. This used to be great, this is probably the date format. These are probably the most popular used. Um, do you know why these are no longer working? Anybody know why these are no longer working for Google? It's because now they're trying to show fresh content and you're telling them that my content's not fresh. It was posted in 2007 and it's a picture of my Hawaii vacation from 2007. <laughs> and you no longer rank, and people go, why do I no longer rank? Because you dated it. Because you dated it. So if you take the date off, then you'd be like, well that's no fair, you didn't tell me when you took it, I can't find out where the date is. Right. So there's the, you know, what are you trying to do? So if you're really just trying to catalog the you know, history of, of your family vacations, I think this is still a great way to go for, for you know, I've done that for plenty of sites, because it's nice to categorize it, um, but if you're, uh, really wanted to keep your stuff fresh, and you were gonna maybe tweak a tiny little thing in that post, and you want it to look like, let's say you're going to Hawaii this week, and you want it to look fresh, and you want to edit some stuff, get rid of the date stuff, get rid of the date structure. So there's some of these old screenshots, but this shows what people are doing out there. You know, what are the, what are the big guys using? So the folks out there using here, month name, day post name. I actually just went through and looked at these. Matt's got a whole new site, but he still uses the same format. He still does the year, the month name, the post name. If you're, if you're Matt, you know, the creator of WordPress, one of the founders, uh, it really doesn't matter, because I think it's a PR8, PR9 site, um, so he, he doesn't really care. So he does the year, the month name, the post name. He can pretty much post a single Word, you know, pretty much, I think he ranks for Matt. He doesn't rank for Cam.